That's what he's saying. I'm Brian Sheldon. And uh, so, <laughs> I always miss something like this. Oh, you're not missing it. The steering committee, uh, next steering committee meeting is the 21st at 6 o'clock. Uh, Francis Tuttle, Rockwell, and 122nd. Everyone is invited to Easter. It's just Ryan and I. Kenyatta. Yeah. Probably not for a few Yeah. Um, <coughs> yeah, I would like to thank Francis Tubb. The lunch meeting we had today, I thought went really well. Um, the facilities are fantastic. You know, the test to uh, so that's really nice of them to provide all that. And uh, maybe a show. So that's about all I've really got. Um, our meeting tonight and at lunch was sponsored by the No Club to Stuff guys. And uh, we'll hear more about No Club to Stuff at 7. And uh, right now we'll have Scott Dix do something on Hello Grails. Hello Grails, huh? <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, hey, thank you for having me here. I really do appreciate it. This is going to be kind of a whole night of, of Groovy and Grails. Just kind of give you an idea of uh, uh, a different kind of development you can do on the JV. Now, before we start, I want to ask, how many of you have worked with uh, Ruby before? Ruby with an R. Gotcha, gotcha. Same. Good stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I really like it a lot. I was working on some Ruby on Rails projects. Were you working on Rails as well? No, just just Ruby. Nope. No Rails, huh? Not yet. Just I just still learning Ruby and TDD. Okay. Oh yeah, that's what's really good. That's what's really good. And over lunch, you said you were dealing a little bit with Rails. So yeah, you had a little bit of this sneak preview over over lunch as well. I have got nothing but good things to say about Ruby and about Rails. It's a profoundly influential uh, programming language. It's not a scripting language. I like calling it a dynamic language. Um, it kind of captures a better idea of what Ruby is all about. Uh, allows you to do a lot of cool metaprogramming and a lot of uh, 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 synthesized methods, things that you don't actually code but just kind of appear out of thin air. So it's definitely good stuff. But the one drawback about Ruby and Ruby on Rails is that it's not Java. And that sounds kind of funny to say, but these are two very different programming languages. Now, it's no hill for a climber. I mean, it's very good for you to be learning different programming languages. And that's why I said Ruby is a profoundly influential programming language. But what I like about Groovy and what I love about Grails is the fact that it gives me the same dynamic programming language. It gives me the same features. I get out of Ruby closures and metaprogramming and things like that, but it runs on the JVM. There's a seamlessly mix and match between Java and Groovy. So that's what my main presentation is going to be about this afternoon, or excuse me, this evening, is talking about how you can call Groovy from Java and Java from Groovy and implement interfaces in Java or, or create interfaces in Java and implement them in Groovy or create interfaces in Groovy and implement them in Java. I mean, we can do all of that really cool stuff. That's what's coming this evening after this other presentation. But Grails is kind of a fun way to give you just a glimpse of this kind of power. Grails is a web framework that uses a lot of Groovy just like Rails is a web framework that uses a lot of Groovy. Does that make sense? the distinction between them. So um, the reason I'm here talking about Groovy and Grails to you tonight is because I am incredibly excited about this stuff. I run a website called aboutgroovy.com. Uh, so if you get into this, if you want to learn more about these things, I encourage you to go check out aboutgroovy.com. It's kind of a, a slash dot or an info queue or something like that, but it's just focused on Groovy and Grails types of things. Really excited about it as well. This book, GIS for Web Developers, is going to the printer this week. Uh, so I'm really excited about GIS for web developers. It's a way for you to do Google Maps type things without using Google Maps. Completely open source mapping tools, completely free and available data for you. The last chapter of the book is actually a groovy chapter. I'm a Java developer, and so I'm using Java utilities all through this. Not exclusively, but a lot of Java utilities. But when it came time for me to do some quick and dirty, hacky, scripty type things, I turned to groovy. And then I've got a book in the works right now with another friend of mine, Venkat Subramanian, who is another speaker on the No Fluff Tour. And we're going to be focusing on strictly groovy in that book. But let me give you a taste of what makes me so excited about this. How many in here use Spring? 
Good stuff, right? Oh, cool. Almost everyone's hands go up. How many of you use hibernate? Almost all the same hands go up. How many use ant? Everyone's hands should go up unless you're a big Maven fan, and I understand. Maven's in there as well. Yes, I do. That was for your benefit here. Uh, other people are shaking. Yeah, yeah. So if we're using all of these time-saving utilities, how come we're not working 18-hour work weeks? How come our wives and our kids don't see? Oh, yeah, you point to your boss. <laughs> all of these utilities are very powerful, but they're all time-saving utilities, and the time we gain by using them seems to be lost by having to integrate them. I gotta pull down Spring from over here and Hibernate from over here and Ant from over here and Tomcat from over here and MySQL from over here. And we spent a lot of time configuring all these different utilities. This is one of the main reasons I love Grails. Grails is a web application in a box. You pull down a single tarball or zip file, it doesn't matter, it's all Java. And you get all of these utilities. Yes, you get Spring, yes, you get Hibernate, yes, you get Xerces and JUnit and Ant and a bunch of things like that, but you also get a web server along for the right, a server container, Jetty. Now, you're not limited to using Jetty, but it's really nice bootstrapping and getting up in a hurry. You get a database, HSQL DB. That's the embedded database, the pure Java database that comes with JBoss. Now, you're not limited to that. You can swap that out for MySQL or DB2 or Oracle or anything that has a JDBC drive. But the point is, you get all of these things out of the box. It's a way for you to get bootstrapped up and running very, very quickly. Now remember what I said earlier, that Groovy runs on the JVM. You have seamless interrupt between Groovy and any of the Java libraries you want. So I took a dump of all, that didn't sound right, did it? <laughs> I took a screenshot, there we go, yes, of the lib directory under Grails. And as you look through this list, they should look awfully familiar. We've got a lot of Jakarta Commons projects there. I love the Commons. Commons CLI, Commons Lang, uh, Commons IO, Commons Logging. We got DOM for J in there. I'm a JDOM guy, but that's okay, because you know what, when it comes time for me to drop JDOM in here, I just copy this into Web and Flip, and I'm using JDOM. We've got Xerces, we got Spring, we have Site Mesh, we got Hibernate, we got Log4J, JUnit, all of these kinds of things just mix it. As a matter of fact, these are all Java jars, with the exception of these three down in the corner. Groovy and Gant, which is Groovy and a Groovy implementation. So you can see what we're dealing with here is probably the technology stack that you're using anyway. With one tiny addition, Groovy down here. Otherwise, this is a pretty standard JAA technology stack. So, we can't talk about web frameworks without talking about Ajax. How many of you here is Prototype, Scriptaculous? Oh yeah, good stuff, good stuff. That ships standard with Rails, but it's not tied to Rails. It's pure JavaScript, so you can use it wherever you want. So, of course, Grails comes standard with that. Grails also comes standard with the UI, the Yahoo UI library. You're a big fan of that? I really like the UI a lot. Uh, I got nothing, I mean, I like prototype as well, but what I really like about the UI is that it's documented until the cows come home. If you go out to developer.yahoo.com, they've got scads and scads and scads of documentation. And it's a battle-tested framework as well. I mean, this is what Yahoo uses to run all of the major Yahoo properties, Yahoo News and Yahoo Mail and those kinds of things. So, of course, Grails supports this kind of thing as well. Anyone here run Dojo? Dojo seems to be a pretty popular one with Java developers, evidence to the contrary. But Dojo kind of gives us an idea of where the direction of Grails is going. Grails is sitting at 0.5 right now. 0.5 just came out this week. It's going to go 1.0 at about Q3 of this year, about the same time that Groovy goes 1.1. Groovy 1.0 came out in December. It's going 1.1 in about autumn. Grails has been working really closely. It's at 0.5 right now. It's going to go 1.0 in autumn. And this is what we're going to see a whole lot more of in Grails. 
you're going to be able to say grails install foo or grails install bar or grails install bass and you'll be able to pull these things down. There's a really strong plugin infrastructure right now. There are Lucene plugins and there's SOAP plugins and there are RESTful plugins and things like that. So this is what you're going to see a whole lot more as you move into Grails. But speaking of moving into Grails, let's do that. Let's figure out what all this is talking about. In this last 15 minutes, I think you're going to get really excited. To get kicked off, you go to grails.org, you pull down that zip or that tarball, again, it doesn't matter. You unzip it, you create Grails Home Environment Variable, you add Grails Home Bin to your path, and you're off to the races. What does that sound like? Every other Java application under the sun. Shoot, that's how you do Java, right? But that's certainly how you install Ant and Tomcat and JBoss and Ant. So, this right here is where things get a little bit interesting. Grails folks are used to this kind of stuff. Maven folks are used to this kind of stuff. AppFuse folks are used to this kind of stuff. And Grails does the same kind of thing. I'm able to say Grails create app bookstore, and it creates a whole directory structure for me. We'll see that in two seconds here. Then once I change to that directory, I'm able to do a whole bunch of things. I'm able to say Grails create a domain app. This is a pogo, a plain old groovy object. So we'll go on and create that pogo, add a couple fields to it. Then we'll go ahead and generate all the other things. This is a pure MVC framework, so generate all will give us controllers and views and things like that. And then when I say Grails run app, it's going to be running using the default Jetty server and the default HSQL DB server. Now that's about all the time we're going to have here, but I encourage you to go to my website, davisworld.org where I've got a lot of these presentations, certainly this one, a lot of presentations on Groovy and Grails, but this one goes on to tell you how you can create war files and how you can plug into different databases and how these GSP pages work, Groovy server pages, and how the controllers work and things like that. But for right now, let's give this a go. If we want to get started, we're going to start in a nice blank directory like this. I've got an OKC directory, and you can see there is nothing up my sleeve, right? So let's get started here. We're going to come in here. We're going to say, Grails, if you would, please, I'd like to create an app named Bookstore. And boom, 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 boom. We have a directory structure. Now, if I pull it up in an editor, we'll see that if I want to create my own Hibernate mapping, I can do that in the Hibernate directory. If I want to drop my own files into VNXML in the Spring directory, I can do that kind of thing. We're going to spend our time looking at Grails app right now. Here's where our controllers go, but there aren't any controllers yet. Here's where our domain classes go, but there aren't any domain classes yet. Here's where our views go, and there's some boilerplate stuff, but no views that we've created. So let's remedy that situation. Let's come in here and say, Grails, if you would please, I'd like to create a domain class named Book. Boom, boom, boom. I now have a file called book.group. This is our first glimpse at a Pogo, plain old groovy object. I think a book ought to have a title and an author, and yeah, I think it's going to have some pages as well. And guess what? I'm done. I don't have to manually create getters and setters. Those are dynamically injected at runtime. I'll be able to call get author, get pages, set title, those kinds of things, but I don't have to define them. I don't have to worry about constructors because I get some really cool constructors. Groovy supports var args, variable number of arguments in their method, and it supports named args as well. So I'll be able to construct this in all kinds of clusters. Notice that I have semicolons up there? Semicolons are optional. I can add them in if I want. Notice I don't have modifiers up there. What does every pod <coughs> you've ever created look like? Public, class, and book. Private, string, this, that, and the other. So those are the intelligent defaults in Groovy. Now, if I wanted this class to be private, great, there's nothing stopping me from doing that kind of thing. But I am leveraging the intelligent defaults of Groovy, which is really idiomatic job at this point. This book will automatically get saved to a database. 
Notice I don't have to extend any magic classes. I don't have to implement any interfaces. I don't have to do anything like that. Dynamically, at runtime, I'll be able to call book.save, book.delete, those kinds of things, and that'll be integrated with our database. Let's go and do the rest here. This is a pogo, but we don't have any controllers or views. So I'm going to say Grails generate all book. And it's going to go through and it's going to create a controller for me. It's going to create some views. I think I mentioned earlier that these views are going to be done in GSPs, groovy server pages. They're going to have groovy tag libs and all kinds of good things like that. Now, I'm just generating them here so we can go in and nose around and kind of see what's up with them. We can see some of these things in action. Technically, I don't do this an awful lot. I generally don't generate them. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll scaffold them, which means that they will just be created dynamically at runtime in memory. I won't have artifacts hanging out on disk. It will just do the right things for me kind of magic. It gives me a lot more flexibility. All right, so we're almost done here generating a list view, edit view, create view, controller, and we're done. Looking back at our editor, we now have a book controller. That does a lot of things we'd expect it to do. List, show, delete, edit. We get full CRUD for free here. And you'll see in our views, we have a number of views as well. We have a create GSP and a edit GSP and a list GSP. That's not the fun stuff. Running it is the fun stuff. Grails, run app. This is all right. As I pop here, I'm going to walk through each one of my domain classes. I'm going to decorate them with all those 